Hey there, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. This is uh, uh, our next edition, our second edition of Everybody Hates Atheism with Deflating Atheism and me, Max, from Escaping Atheism, the main guy who does the stuff, even though we really do have six people now on the Escaping Atheism team. One of them a Gaelic pagan, not even a Christian. We're having a good time. But anyway, we're joined again with Deflating Atheism, and the last week has seen a lot of atheist butthurt over our previous video looking at Kyle Kalinske. Also, yes. we've gotten some major atheist butthurt and some really unhinged, like bordering on psychotic attacks on the videos I did with my son. But let's get started. What kind of fun have you gotten into this week with the atheists? Uh, the well, I, I don't know. For for some reason, uh, uh, my mirror of the Kyle Kalinske video, video just kind of caught fire, and, and and it was just flooded with atheist comments. He's obviously the views were not coming from Christians, uh -huh. so so it, it got flooded with traffic, which is very odd for my small channel. It, it got like it got like six hundred and forty views in one day. So for some reason, they all congregated on this video. Yeah, they seem to like your channel more than the Escaping Atheism channel, maybe just because it's bigger at the moment, although Escaping yeah, Atheism is growing. Yeah, Escaping Atheism is growing pretty fast. We have just cracked 250, and I expect to keep growing. Um, uh, the, the, the level of, of, of – one of the things that I saw right away, if you go and look at the videos on the Escaping Atheism channel, you'll find that our team is more brutal. And yes, whether y'all want to believe it or not, we do have more than one person moderating comments on our boards. We do have more than one person answering all our Twitter accounts. We are a group. Um, so some of you sometimes are addressing someone called Dean, and it's not always him on the other end, just so you know. But in any case, um, I did see one, a comment directly accusing me of saying something I never said and don't believe. And I've seen a pattern of that. I don't know if you've seen that yet, but one was actively accusing me of opposing prostitution, opposing sex workers, um, and uh, being and, and raging on them and blocking them because uh, they said people, you know, that sex work should be legal. And, and that all I could do was rage about the Bible or whatever and how sick <laughs> it was. And that is actually the exact opposite of the truth. Had anybody asked me, I would have told you that I take the same basic position as St. Augustine which is things like that are better to be legal and controlled if they're, you know, cordoned off somewhere, like in a red light district, they yeah. call them. If you're going to have the prostitute, I even think that about drugs. I'm not a libertarian, but I think the fix for heroin is you have to go to the heroin place that's licensed and have your heroin there and not be allowed to drive and have people there tell you how to get out of the heroin thing or whatever it is. I'm actually pretty compatible with a lot of basic libertarian ideas on that. But don't ask. I've known a lot of people in the life, okay? I've known strippers. I've known prostitutes. Um, the happy hooker is a rare thing. Uh, don't don't ask me to celebrate yeah. it. Yeah. The happy hooker exists, but boy, is she rare. And he and boy, boy prostitutes are an issue nobody talks about. A lot of young men fall into prostitution. Um, there's yeah. nothing to celebrate there, but I don't want people in jail. Yeah. I really don't. Yeah. Um, well, unless it's, you know, trafficking in minors. Yes, then I want them in jail. But you know yeah. what I mean. Yes. Uh, well, I, I, have, I have about... friends who are sex workers. In fact, I'll tell you, in my church, it wouldn't be too surprising to see a prostitute in church because she'd be going to confession, presumably, and trying to get out of the life and being supportive while she was trying to do that. Yes. In my religion, in my particular church, that's actually how you would do it. You wouldn't even conditionally say you can't come until you clean up. It'd be like, come on in. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so this, you know, it's insulting. They just make things up about you. Yeah. Uh, what I was going to say, but by the way, uh, I know I know how I feel. You'll probably agree with me here. Is that I have so much more respect for a person who is down and out like a drug addict or a prostitute who can recognize their own weaknesses than than the kind of arrogant, haughty uh, uh, atheist on the you know the keyboard warrior who is just completely assured of their own superiority. It it is so much easier for me to feel the agape love for that person who can recognize their own weaknesses than than a person who is just deluded that they are you know superior. 
that's the that's that's probably what we're pointing to here is actually I know it's a bit of a change of subject, but it it does go to a division, a really sharp division in thinking between your more evangelical Protestant types and your more Orthodox and Catholic types, which is that Orthodox and Catholic types see uh, salvation not as something you achieve with belief, but as something you work toward. Yeah throughout your life and try and get better, better at, um, and get closer to God. So it's a process, not an event. And it's not uncommon. Like I've had many people ask me about Milo Yiannopoulos, the flaming gay guy who gives speeches and he's Catholic, but he's very gay and he has a lot of boyfriends and he drinks and does drugs and he's flamboyant about it. But he's also said that he's seeking help for these things. Yeah. It's really an old like tradition. Like he's working on it. Therefore it's not on us to judge. Yeah. We assume he's telling the truth that he's struggling with his his issues, and it's otherwise none of our business. And yeah, actually, again, that whole that's a whole description of the tolerance that comes with with old school Christianity, as opposed to the fundamentalist Bible thumpers who think if you have Jesus, you're perfect now, right, mm. or whatever, right? And the yeah. atheists will take that Bible thumper real hard assery that most Christians don't have, and they'll apply it themselves. So like. I've had a few say, look at that. You're following a prostitute and she's got nudies. You must be, you know, because he thought it would be like a sex scandal for me or something. Yeah. Like, no, why wouldn't I talk to a prostitute? Why yeah. on earth would I not? I mean, I don't <laughs> want my 12-year-old hanging out with a prostitute per se until certain boundaries are established. But yeah. this whole notion of the hateful, nasty, intolerant Christian is just bogus, man. And I'm yeah. I'm hearing it. I'm sick of hearing it. I, I kind of get the same sense that, that you're kind of on the same page as I am. Is that we're both Christians, but n neither of us have had our hands soaking in ivory liquid all this time, you know. Oh man, oh man. I don't I don't do the 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 the, the you know conversion uh, you know, came to Jesus story, but I was surely a mess when I walked into the church. I'll, I will. Yeah, say yeah. I was, and I'm no saint now. And it's, yeah. The reason we have oh. things, the, the reason we have things like going to what they used to call confession, they call it reconciliation now. I can tell you, most priests are bored by most confessions because they're not that interesting. Because <laughs> you know, less... this guy. Oh, here I lied. Okay, okay. Oh, I have been having an affair. Oh, I heard you were. You know, you told me that last time. Still working on it. You know, um, it's not a big. <laughs> It's always about trying to get better as a person. It's not about being perfect as a person. That's yeah. just such a huge difference that they don't get, right? Yeah. Um, um, I was no well, virgin when I got married. And uh, I'll just say it. There's probably no drug on the market I haven't tried. Okay. I've had me some party times. And I'm not yeah. here to tell you that it all instantly went away the day I found Jesus. No, 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 no. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what what I was going to say was was about like recognizing uh, our weaknesses is is that is that the belief that there is that there is a God who 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 can who can judge us and who can see us is that it, it kind of punctures our our kind of our kind of tunnel visioned view of ourselves whether whether it is an individual or a government or whatever with kind of an atheist mindset the only virtue becomes consistency and that 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 I think kind of explains the kind of arrogance. Uh, of so many atheists is that is that their their only virtue is consistency. Their only virtue is is, is just you know continuing to believe in, in the ultimate righteousness of what they believe. And so I, I mean I mean yeah, and they so so though I mean what what you see over and over again in atheist land, and I'm sorry I I would lived in atheist land a long time, so I know what atheists are like. Yeah, they 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 value consistency over all things. Yeah, and of course they can't achieve it. Because nobody can, cause nobody, and then they turn on each other. Um, yeah. It's I, I hear some. I hear like there's some big spat going on with with shoe and armored skeptic, and I just don't care because it's like, yep. I was talking to Brett Keen about this this week, and it's the same thing. Yeah, if they can't find a target, they turn on each other. Yeah, yeah. And this week, I know a lot of them would seem to have been really flipped out about my videos using. I've got two now, but. Uh, three or four coming up, I think. Uh, my little short videos with my son, Max Jr. Yes. Oh, my God, the rage. I mean, I've been called the son of a bitch. I've been called a brainwasher. I've been called, uh, you know, everything under the book. Somebody spreading hate. 
Um, what's interesting is they everything in that video is perfectly rational and perfectly sensible. And they say, I'm quote unquote, indoctrinating my son. What do you think? Yeah. Indoctrinating my son. You say the word is absolutely correct. Well, yes. If by indoctrinate, you mean teach. Yes. Um, and that I could teach my child geography or math the exact same way, indoctrinate them with math. I, I have yet to see the, uh, uh, the the atheist look at that video and say, what's false in it? Yeah. They all run against the atheist proposition, but they're all for one purpose, to make sure my child knows, no, there are rational reasons to believe in God. So when somebody says there's none, I'm sorry, they're either dumb or lying. And in yeah. many cases, I know they'll be lying because I've seen them do it. Mm -hmm. They'll say there's no evidence for God. And then you give 20 pieces of evidence and they will try to explain away every one of those pieces of evidence. And the problem is, once you notice they're doing that, they're always cutting away toward their own predetermined conclusion. Yes. Well, right? this kind of goes into, into what I wanted to talk about the response to our last video, because when the atheist says there is no evidence for God, and basically, uh, and say, prove me wrong, and you accept the uh, they're gonna they're gonna start shrieking like howler monkeys when I say this. But when you allow them to shift the burden of proof, uh, you've already kind of acknowledged their premise that there is no evidence for God because they have changed, they've moved the goalposts where there is no evidence for God until you convince me otherwise but they refuse to be convinced otherwise on principle. So you're basically granting their premise that there is no evidence for God. It's yes. It's this mind twisty thing they do where they say, I'll believe it if you can prove it, but then they cross their, their arms and everything Peter's piece of evidence you give, they'll say that's not evidence. And that, that's, that's the bunk. That's bias. And what happens is because they have elected themselves arbiters, the omniscient are arbiters of all evidence. Right. And that's why, that's why the burden of proof merely says you provide evidence for your uh, for your belief. It doesn't say you must convince the other person of the, of the truth of, of your claim because otherwise just people refuse to be convinced, you know? Yes, I can give 10 pieces of evidence for why I find the existence of God compelling and why I think the no God position makes no sense. Yeah. And you can try to debunk me, but no, you can't. I find the evidence quite compelling. Thank you. Yeah. Well, you no, they don't. No, out of that because you have a good, you know, I've studied my physics. I've studied my biology. I know science better than most people listening to this. Uh, you can't snow me. It's a rational conclusion based on evidence. If you want me to change my mind, give me a good reason to. And they yeah. never can. Um, well, and they pretend that that's me assuming my conclusion, but they're assuming theirs. The godless universe, the random causeless universe, is nonsense on its face. Prove to me I should take it seriously. And yeah. they can't. Um, well, uh, the, the, the problem with so-called skepticism is, is that it, it's kind of uh, uh, extreme mule-headed skepticism when it comes to any atheist claim, but complete credulousness when it comes to any anti-Christian claim. So if they say, oh, well, this is debunked, uh, oh, you can find it on the internet. You know, there's a person with a YouTube video claiming a, you know, uh, uh, the first cause argument is debunked. Oh, well, that's good enough for us. It, it's, it's debunked, so it's debunked. It, it's total credulousness with any atheist claim. That's, that's right. Just, just go to an atheist. That they wave it away. Just go to an atheist website where an atheist expert will tell you why the argument has been debunked. Then never wonder what you're doing wrong. Exactly. You are and credulously you accepting the atheist. Uh, assumption and position. Yeah. What's really slippery about it is they will say things with the language like, this argument is unconvincing, without adding the necessary end of that sentence is, you know, this argument is in unconvincing to me. Yeah. Yeah. According to my arbitrary standards, which I just made up. Yeah. Um, because otherwise, as the atheist, what he will accept as evidence. To simply yeah. dismiss it all. I mean, I could give you the litany, right? There's 20 logical arguments that are thousands of years old. Peter Kreef's got them. There's evidence in quantum mechanics. There's evidence in cosmology. There's evidence in history. <laughs> There's so much evidence. It's like, what will you accept? Mm -hmm. you know, I, 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 they, if they won't come to the table and say what they'll accept. I mean, I just took apart another one. 
I don't know what they'll bother to say, but there's interesting. There's an interesting video by a Baptist group. I think they're down in Texas, um, and their video. I should point it, point people to it. But it's it's basically the title is you know atheists are bullies is part of the title. It calls atheists bullies, and it talks about specific Jesus claims, and. A, I'm glad those Baptists are starting to recognize, yes, atheists are bullies, because they are, um, and pointing it out. But then I saw an atheist takedown video, and I didn't even bother finishing it. Because the atheist, because the, 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 the Baptist video, it was about uh, specific biblical claims. So what did the atheist do? He took it apart on the basis that no proof for, that miracles or God exist. Yeah, He's yeah. Like, Okay, so you've already rejected the possibility that there are miracles, and you've already rejected the possibility that there is God. Therefore, you might as well just flush the entire Bible and every holy book ever written down the toilet because you've just dismissed yeah. the possibility that any of that is real. Yeah. And what what more is there to talk about? Yeah. <laughs> if I, I, the I, I, I mean, that's kind of like the the whole hurling the elephant tactic of ju of just kind of overloading your opponent with you know if if we want to respond to objections just to like the contingency argument that's a discussion in and of itself but then they they keep they just you know keep throwing flip to the next thing up. and they love that so they have it yeah. so they have it so where if, if somehow and of course they're going to stale me then you have to accept their premise that there is no evidence for God. And and you have to pre accept their premise that therefore there is no God, yeah. Or we should just assume there is one, and the question is irrelevant until you prove there's one, and the proof they want, they will never say what they'll take. They won't, you know. We'll but, by the way, I think this would be a good time that we start talking about about the responses on my channel. To oh, let's hear it. Sure, let's hear it. Okay. Well, uh, uh, let me just be, let me just describe what we do on Escaping Atheism. Really, we kind of have a heuristic. You get one or two typical smart ass uh, unhinged or paint by numbers atheist talking point and all we do is notice the, the, the little move you made there because all the responses are are predictable for the most part yeah we notice the move and then we block you and we'll keep doing that and we do it because we don't have all day and by the way we can tell a lot of the responses are sock puppets like one guy who's got four or five accounts we can see that happening, and we're having none of it. What we want is religious people to see that you can face these people down and yes. see the pipe by numbers way they go. And yes. we don't care to see their comments otherwise. What, what's been happening on your channel? Oh, well, well, I, I thought you would be disturbed by the, uh, the comments they've been leaving. Uh, they call us stupid. Can you believe of that? Of course. Oh, I feel bad. An atheist thinks I'm stupid. Yes. Ah. I, and, oh, uh, and also, uh, an, an atheist is angry somewhere on the internet. We'd better have something about that. <laughs> Sound the alarm. Yeah. So, also, also, uh, we're old, and uh, okay. we're we're southern, which which I'm sure is news to you. But uh, oh, we're southern. Yeah, I mean, you know what's the what's the cruelest thing? It's like well, I, I there since the election, there has been so much anti-southern, anti-flyover state chauvinism. And that usually gets wrapped up in this atheist. Oh, it's only there. Yeah, that's the thing. Uh, you guys live in the South, where which is the only place where thousands of stupid people will listen to a stupid pre. It was just completely moronic. But the the cruelest response you can say to something like that is, "You are the reason Donald Trump won." That that is the cruelest <laughs> thing you can say. <laughs> thank you, thank you. You are the reason Donald Trump won. They are the reason that Donald Trump won. They're yeah. the reason that Donald Trump won. Oh, my God, the elitism and the condescension. I'm sorry, what is wrong with atheists? You get a, you say you're not a movement or an ideology, even though yeah. you all hang out with each other all the time, and you all completely agree that you are all completely rational and everybody else is dumb. And about 70% of you voted for Hillary. And, you know, we, we know most of you are socialists. If you're not a socialist, you're probably a libertarian. But anyway, there's nothing predictable about you. <laughs> There's, uh, I don't even know where I was going on that because these people are so predictable, and yeah. their, their elitism. Their, their, when you see multiple surveys, I mean, there, I, there was one released just in the last week or two. I, I, I'll try and get the link for the low bar later, showing that after ten years, atheists are as unpopular as ever. Yes, and um, it's like, gee, I know <laughs> you've made this point deflating, but I'll say it. Why don't you all just scream about how much everybody else sucks some more? Yeah. 
and how stupid everybody is to feel that way and how horrible they are and how awesome and brilliant you are. If only you were understood that it's just lack of belief. Ah! Okay. You're so likable. <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing. I mean, to just call yourselves the, the rational and, and, and reasonable and scientific elite a few million more times, I guess we'll just have to believe you at that point, right? I mean... That's how it works. It's uh, science. They're such ingrates, science. you know. They're such ingrates. It actually makes me sad because I—I I think I've said this before. Maybe I said it last time. I'll say it again. I am an old school nerd because um, I've always had physical issues, um, and you know that limit my. But the thing is, nerds. I, I tell you, in the '80s and the '90s, it used to be fun to argue religion with nerds. Yes. Because it was just, we were poking fun at each other, and we were trying to see each other's point. And you would even see, you know, then your nerd friend might even say something like imaginary friend. But he knew he was joking and that you were a yeah. little more serious than that. And now it's just turned into this angry nerd thing like, oh, my God, don't even reveal you're a Christian. Yeah. Oh, well, my I, God. This is the whole thing about nerd culture. Because I actually, I actually, it was a humorous post I made, I made on the web forum a long time ago. But I was comparing uh, uh, nerds from the 80s to nerds nowadays. And, you know, back in the era of Revenge of the Nerds, you know, nerds were on the forefront of a lot of things. They were, like, doing computers and Clever stuff. Clever and inventive. And... I, I mean, it was dynamic. It was vital. And nowadays, it, it, is, it, is, this kind of, it is this kind of determined, uh, 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 complete indolence and complete inertia and just complete self-satisfaction. And what's happened is that... A, you have a whole industry now depending uh, that 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 is dedicated to catering to nerds. Hollywood is like is like bending over backwards to cater to nerds at this point, and the media wants to kind of feed into their kind of self. Oh, and then they have the fake. When it comes to religion, when it comes to religion, now they know. I'm going. I'm going to make well, a video, several videos about this, but you know. Whenever, like, 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 let's say the uh, the Washington Post uh, two years ago, they had a Jesus never existed article. The reason they do that is because you they know if you put that article on social media, all the atheists are going to like and share that. That's clicks. That's guaranteed clicks. If if you put out a, a video that says you know scholars are still certain that Jesus existed, which is the truth, you know that's that's not going to have any legs at all. Yeah, I'll, I'll make a shout out to a book I just started reading uh, with my wife, um, who is, by the way, a godless heathen. I still love her, though. Um, but she's been she's at least open minded and interested in religious stuff. And uh, it's by N.T. Wright, who is a very qualified yes. historian um, on the historical Jesus. Yes. And I'm sorry if you're all hooked into Bible Reloaded and all these so-called, you know, Richard Carrier and these all so-called, you know, Jesus debunkers, why don't you have the guts to read something written by a historian who takes the opposite view and says, what are you kidding? Of course there's a Jesus and here's why. And he's a true scholar, not just some idiot like Ken Ham. Yeah. Read some N.T. Wright on the historical Jesus. Just throwing well, that out there. What's hilarious is that, uh, uh, I know we're talking about the whole uh, skeptical "Quote unquote pro science like Facebook pages when they'll criticize like a person who denies global warming. And, oh, you cherry pick this scientist that goes against the consensus of ninety-seven percent of scientists. You're doing the same thing. Yes, like, they are. Ninety-nine percent of, of, of qualified historical scholars will tell you beyond any reasonable doubt Jesus existed. But hey, you get Robert Price or Richard Carrier just because they're going to feed your opinion back to you." That's right. If you're going to have these opinions, if you're going to be a debunker, try debunking the debunkers, have some yeah. skepticism, realize that at minimum there truly is a debate here, and don't pretend that there's only one side's got to prove anything. Like, oh, I say I debunked the Bible, so it's debunked. What? Yes. Yes. What? Uh, here, I debunk you. I debunk you. No, I debunk you first. What, what, what kind of thinking is that, right? <laughs> Even just that word debunk, that I'm, I, I already start tuning them out at that point. I say, yeah, no, you refute, okay, okay? That's what I always say. Yo, Aristotle's not Yuri Geller, okay? You debunk Yuri Geller. You don't debunk Aristotle. No, no, you really don't. And this whole I see no need stuff, you know, I see no need for a God or I see no need for that. You know what the response is? I do see one. Yes, yes. Talk me out of it. 
Yes. Uh, because it's a rational conclusion based on evidence, and it makes, you know, on any of these, right? No, really, I think God's the source of reality. Therefore, God is why things yeah. like logic work at all. Um, it makes far more sense than logic just kind of does that because it does. No, logic is a universal thing, not bound by the laws of physics. That I mean, that all makes perfect sense to me. Why would it not make sense to you? Right. I mean, so the, 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 the whole atheist presumption that we're right by default because we say so, it needs to be skewered in the culture and more people need to hear us doing it, you know. Um, so I'm rambling here, but so far the atheist opinions seem to all be we are indoctrinating and brainwashing people. Show us how we're doing that, please. Um, but again, I'm sorry. I, I wanted to. I, oh, I'm sorry. Do you have anything to say? Because oh, I had one other thing that I noticed. I'm starting to think of it generally as the atheist two-step because always when you're about to nail them on the point, they change the subject. Um, yes. You know, when you nail them on the fact that there's ample evidence of a you know, a guiding intelligence in the universe, they say, well, yeah, but what about your specific God? Yeah. Well, we didn't, that's not what we were talking about. Um, and, I, and you have the escape hatch, you have the escape hatch, which is like talking snakes or something, you know, when in doubt, just pull the escape hatch. Yeah, you know, yeah, but you believe in talking snakes. Why, yes, yeah. I do believe in stock talking snakes, Mr. Atheist. I believe I'm talking to you, aren't I? Well, that is a great <laughs> comeback. That is a great <laughs> comeback. It is. More people should use it. Yes, Atheist, I do believe yeah. in talking to snakes. I believe I'm talking to one right now. They'll be, <laughs> they'll be jettisoned the backwards, yes. <laughs> um, it's, yeah, well, I, this is the one I keep seeing over and over again, too, and I bet you've seen this one. And they, they did this on the Kyle Kolinsky video, too. You didn't actually prove there was a god anywhere. Yes! No, that was my next, <laughs> that was my next topic of conversation. We to like, we have to do that every time. Go ahead. Because, because when you were saying God is, is, a, is, a, is a rational belief based on evidence, they, they, got, they got so, so... Uh, 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 wound up about that they said oh well the fact that you claim that is not proof we never claim that the fact that we claim that there's evidence in the rational basis of belief is the proof what the hell is wrong with you people I, but yes yes that is a phrase uh, every christian should learn every jew should learn every buddhist who believes in god every shit to any of any because most people do believe in god just learn that phrase it's a rational conclusion based on evidence it is thoroughly evidence-based because it yes. is and, and the atheists don't like that because they think they own evidence and they think they own rationality. Yes, it's yes. Nonsense. No. Anytime. No, really. It is rational to conclude that there's a God. Show me why it's not rational. I, I, and they believe that they are in possession of all evidence relevant to the existence, to the matter of the existence of God, so yes. that they can, they can, they can offer the, these kind of uh, uh, peremptory proclamations, like there is no evidence for God. That's but right. yes. So, so they were very indignant that, that we dared to make a video criticizing atheists without, without, without dutifully building the entire case for God from the ground up uh, 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 for their edification. <laughs> and we, we, we have to do that every single time. Every time you want to comment on, 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 a, on, a, on a Facebook comment or something or a YouTube video, just anything having to do with God, you you are obligated to then and there build the case for God from the ground up to their satisfaction. That that that's yeah. that's uh, uh, obligatory. It's not that okay? Or, or it'll be even be a complete non sequitur or nowhere. Like, show me where that's in the Bible. I'm like, yeah. I don't recall where we're talking about the Bible, but you know, I mean, it's like, why don't you just discuss what's there? Well, there's nothing to discuss, and that's yeah. that's that's half the problem. Um, yes. Atheists, and I hear the atheists like you're you're making presumptions about the truth here. I'm like, I'm drawing conclusions about the truth based on evidence and logic and experience. Yeah. Um, and they seem like the most sensible conclusions to me. Would you care to explain to me why they're not? Yes. Um, it really is is that simple. I came to my conclusions. Yeah. Based on the evidence, why shouldn't I do that? And, and and so, no, the atheist doesn't get to say what's convincing and what's not. The atheist doesn't get to determine what's rational and what's not. Yeah. And the atheist doesn't, is not the science expert unless he's going to put relevant credentials on the line. And then he must show why his credentials are relevant. Right? Yeah. I mean, sorry. I mean, I know astronomers. I've talked to astronomers who believe in God. And they came to believe in God just by studying the stars and realizing something orderly must make that all go. 
Yeah. You know, something intelligent makes must make that all go. I, I've talked to biologists uh, who've like, this is just impossible, you know. Yes. Uh, it made me realize there had to be something driving everything. It can't, you know, all kinds of rational reasons to make this conclusion. Yes. And so it's, it comes to the question of, do you reject the conclusion and why? And yeah, it is fair to ask that, especially when most people in some way believe in this stuff. Yeah. Um, we aren't on trial to the atheist minority. Mm -hmm. And they seem to think we are. That's the number one thing, the, the arrogance that comes out of all of them. Mm -hmm. Like, we have to prove something to them. No, we do not. Uh, at least not unless they're, you're going to get in the docket and have your own thoughts uh, yeah. on trial, too. Because well, really, the atheist presumption that reduces everything to materialism, which is what 99% of them do, it's bullshit. Yeah, yeah. So we've probably been going long enough, but what else might you, what you want to talk about? Uh, geez, now now, now I, I I forgot what I was about to say. But uh, yeah, let, let me just let me just explain this uh, 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 for the edification of, of our atheist viewers. Since atheists love using a uh, uh, silly examples, I thought I would have a, a silly example of my own, and just to explain why why we dare to speak about atheists and, and how we dare to speak about God without humbly submitting our, our, our entire case for God at, at the top of every uh, video or whatnot. So, <laughs> You're I, I, worthy I, of, the, uh, of the atheist's attention, yes. Yes. So let, let, let's say I'm an a New Yorkist. I, I, I lack a belief. I, I, would, I would never dare to say that New York doesn't exist. I just, I just lack a belief uh, in New York uh, based on the lack of evidence. And so whenever you want to make a comment about New York or, or just say anything, just brushing on the topic of New York City, I, I jump in there and say, where is your evidence for New York City? And you know, maybe you go, okay, well, here, 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 uh, this is this. And I say, no, that's been debunked. That's biased. <laughs> I, I, and we keep doing this, and every time you want to post something on Facebook or on YouTube, even mentioning New York, I jump in there and say, where is your evidence? There is no evidence for New York. Prove me wrong. Which Over 100 is, years ago. This argument. There is no evidence. Prove me wrong. Well, if you already know there is no evidence, why are you asking me to prove you wrong? So, yeah, so every one time you want to reference New York, I say, there is no evidence. Prove me wrong, and then I wave it away. After like 200 or 300 or 400 times, <laughs> You're probably not. You probably wouldn't be so inclined to keep building that case for New York City from the ground up. So that's kind of in the position we're in. Okay, I like to think I'm a pretty smart guy. I'm sure Kyle likes to think he's a pretty smart guy. We're not so sure about each other, but <laughs> we will both agree. We will both agree that there are people far, far smarter than both of us who have written exhaustively about the evidence for God. Again, I would direct people to the Blackwell Companion to the Natural Theology for kind of a, a comprehensive tome. But yes, I mean, this has been gone over. I'd be, willing, I'd be willing to debate it. I'd be willing to discuss it. I'm not going to debate it with a person who, who, who changes, uh, who, who flips the playing field so that it, it's, no, there is no evidence for God until you convince me otherwise. I'm not willing to have that conversation. If you ask me, hey, why do you believe in God? What do you think are good reasons for believing in God? That I can take as, as a good faith invitation for discussing, the, for discussing the matter. Yeah, that's really it. Yeah. You want a good faith discussion, say, well, why do you think it's a good yeah. You know, why do you think it's reasonable? And and a shout out to natural theology, by the way, for all of those of you who think it's 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 uh it's just Harry Potter magic or whatever. Uh actually look into something called Thomas, T H O M I S T, Thomas Natural Theology. Yes. And natural philosophy, because it's interesting in that it it it, it integrates Christian thinking seamlessly into also into ethics and into how to do science properly, and it does it magnificently most of the mm -hmm. time. Um, you can really build a natural, you know, Thomas Natural Philosophy uh, foundation for doing scientific research. It's been done. Believe me, it has been. Um, so, yeah, no. Get, God, why can't people at least be curious, right? That's, yes. That's, that's the number one, but the mind-closing nature of just saying science has it all figured out 
That, yeah, that's... right. Okay, or we'll figure it all out. Massive face statements there. You can't back up with much. Yeah, that that's what gets me about about the kind of, kind of liberal arrogance. You remember when uh, 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 Sarah Palin first got on the scene? The the kind of keyword, the kind of buzzword was incuriosity, and suddenly. Yeah. So suddenly, all all the liberals were talking about in curiosity. Uh, that's I'm not the world's biggest Palin fan, by the way. I don't think she's the brightest bulb out well, there. No, I'm just but, using her as an example. Uh, just, yes, they uh, would talk about how incurious she was. There's nothing in more incurious than your average atheist, dude. Yes. Oh yes. my God, they are so convinced they know everything and can make snap judgments about everything. Yes. And and, and they oh they think stuff is science that isn't. Like, you're automatically anti-science if you question global warming. I'm not even telling you an opinion on global warming, but, like, yeah. really? You can't have a skeptical opinion? Yeah. On, okay, so there's dogmas here. There's dogmas. We have to believe in global warming in a certain way, and we have to believe in evolution in a certain way, and we have yeah. to believe, because if we don't, it's not science. And so that's, how is that even not dogmatic? Yeah. I mean, wouldn't it even be less dogmatic to say, you know, I know it sounds crazy, but what if that Ken Ham and his kooky creation museum – what if he just happens to be right and the rest yeah. of us are crazy? You know, an educated mind could at least entertain the thought. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And entertain the thought. Hey, maybe the Earth's only a hundred years old, and God just kind of retconned all that history and it's all fake. <laughs> and maybe there's only twenty-five of us in, in the whole world, and the rest are all fakes. Yes, yes. Why would you not? I'm not saying that's true, but can't you entertain thoughts like this? What are you not, afraid not of? Someone sue someone who believes differently, as as they're doing with with, with, with global warming. Again, I'm not ta I'm not taking an adversarial position there, but I I mean when when you actively have to suppress an opinion, when you have that to sue, a little sketchy. Well, it does, it does, and it makes it always looks bad. That's why that yeah. You know what? We could keep going and going, but I think we've answered the critics enough, basically. Okay. What really got me was the ones who would just outright lie. The ones who yeah. would just outright lie and accuse us of saying things we didn't or believing things that we didn't. And then those are the ones who would derail and try – I mean, real derailing, not fake derailing. Real derailing, like changing the subject completely yeah. to find a flaw, like you didn't build your case from the ground up for everything to my satisfaction before you dared to criticize poor Kyle. Poor Kyle, who can't be criticized because atheist. Yeah. Get over it, right? Same thing. I'm perfectly free to, and other parents are too, to teach their children why the atheist case makes no sense. We're free to do that. We're free to yeah. talk about what the ancient arguments are for God. And we're free to talk about the ancient arguments against the atheist position, of which there are many. And we're free to talk about truth in religion and why we think religion is good and lack of religion is bad. I could talk for an hour about why you are going to be healthier if you're going to church regularly, probably. Yeah. I mean, so really, we're free to educate our children. They, they don't talk, there have been a few studies recently that, that, that put forward that position. You don't hear them. They're, they're not sharing and liking that. You know? No, they're not. There are multiple, not just recent studies, but studies going back decades. Um, sorry, it's atheist propaganda. In reality, if you go to church, you're less likely to go to jail. Um, you're less likely to give, be a single mom. You're less likely to be into drugs. You're less likely to commit suicide. Uh, all of that is, there's documentation of that. Um, it may even be therapeutic abuse for psychologists and social workers to discourage relis, religious observance rather than encouraging yeah. it. Um, unless, of course, thing. they're coming out of a bad cult. And there are bad religious cults. But we also know there are bad non-religious cults. Have you guys yes. not figured out there are horrible non-religious cults out there? Because <laughs> there yes. are. Um, so, well, like Jonestown, you know? Well, yes. And, and the atheist movement. I'm sorry. Go watch Atheist Experience. Please go watch the Atheist Experience. Then come out of an hour of that and go, there's no atheist movement. <laughs> what? <laughs> there's a movement. Yeah. Be aware of them. Look at what they say and notice how you can actually punch holes in them very yeah. really easily most of the time. Once you just realize if atheists are free to criticize the religious and religion, we're free to criticize back. And if yeah. they don't like it, too bad. Yeah. All right. Anything else you want to close with, man? No, I thought that was a great I thought that was a great stopping point right there.
All right. We'll see you guys later. We'll probably we're, we're going to try and make this regularly. We're still looking for help, so please like, yeah. please subscribe both channels. You know, we got the Patreon, we got the tip jars. Help us do more of this. It's needed. I, uh, I, 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 huh? And we are we. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I want to interrupt. But we are we are planning on doing a thing where we get an atheist YouTube video uh, every week, and we and we kind of dissect it. We still have some uh, technical difficulties to iron out yeah. there. And we could probably use a little help with equipment and spending and stuff like that. I'm serious. So any help you give, we would really appreciate. Uh, all right. Stay tuned. God bless everybody. Thank you.